Hi, it's Dan here from Flexible, and I'm so pumped about the webinar I'm about to show you, which is on how to build your very own ChatGPT database reactivation Android. Let's dive in. I hope you enjoy. For those of you who are not aware, there's kind of an underground marketing service that people offer, and it's called database reactivation, right? Some of you are probably aware of it, and it's maybe it's not that underground, but it's a very easy offer when you put it in front of clients because they believe that their database of old leads are dead. Anything they get from them is really a bonus and um, they're quite happy to split the profits with you. The problem with the offer or this offer to clients who are actually delivering on the offer is that you have to have people that are on email or SMS or inside um, high level or whatever CRM you have, going back and forth with the prospect and qualifying and then booking the person back into an appointment for a close, which is still good and it's still very profitable in a way because you only need a few deals to get over the line. But what's happening now with ChatGPT and everything AI related is that we're able to have the qualification and closing of the lead carried out by AI basically, which is super cool because we can still put the same offer in front of the clients, get them to hand over their databases, still sp split the profits 50-50 with them, but have AI do all the work for us. It's really, really exciting. Okay, so in this webinar, I'm gonna show you how we, we do this and how we build it. And I'm also gonna cover what type of hand raiser messages we have out to their list, okay? It's very crucial that you get the right kind of first SMS, we call them a hand raiser that goes out, which engages the lead, the client's lead and gets them in a conversation flow with AI and then that will be booked in, booking them into um, an appointment back with the client for the close, right? I'm also gonna give you the prompt that we use. I'm also gonna give you some email templates about how you can reach out to your previous clients or current clients and make this offer to them. So by the end of the webinar, you should be able to have everything you need to be able to start making these offers yourself to your clients, all right? And especially if you're sick of running paid ads and having lead quality issues and stuff like this, this might be music to your ears, okay? So please enjoy the webinar and I'll speak to you soon. So I hope everyone's well. Today's webinar is about database reactivation using ChatGPT. My name is Dan Wardrop and I'm here with Jamie. You've probably seen this slide before. I run an agency, Flex Digital. I also have my um, education business around paper lead and AI automation now. And we have a school group called the AI Automation Agency. And that's a free community that you can kind of come to and ask questions. And after this webinar or whatever, if you're not in it already, then I'd recommend you going in. Yes, yeah, free to join. All right, so we like to move fast here at Flexible. I think you kind of have to have to do with AI and everything that's going on in the world at the moment. So if it's not you, that's fine. There's going to be an offer at the end of this webinar, which will help you build what we have done. It's 100% free. So if you do want to leave early and you've got to pick up the kids or whatever that is, then that's fine. You can catch the replay on YouTube, which I think will be coming out on Thursday. Okay, stay you can because we've got a resource document at the end of this call. All right, so most of you probably know Jamie by now. So Jamie was the one that kind of approached me with all of this AI stuff probably about nine months ago now, and he's become a valuable partner and flexible. But Jamie, just want to give yourself a real kind of quick intro on what you're doing now and what you're doing before and what's going on in your life at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um... Thanks. Um, so I started out as a direct response copywriter, working for a few big names, ended up moving into just looking after local businesses, figured out that they're kind of crap at sales. Um, but around this time, like COVID kicked in, wiped out the business model for me, as a lot of my business clients were customer facing. I moved to a larger clients, solicitors, lawyers who needed complex automations to, set, to be set up. Figured yep. out that they're a little bit better at calling leads, but still not as quite as good as I'd like them. And that's where the whole AI automation idea kind of came from, was that problem of trying to improve lead quality, trying to improve the response rates, and kind of brings us to um, today. Perfect. Good stuff. All right. So I just want to get a show of hands, right? You had some homework to do. We didn't promote actively promote this link. Um, uh, we didn't drop the link in any emails or anything like this, the registration link, and we got a ton of people 
registering, but we wanted to make it um, a webinar where people kind of came to plan and had um, something kind of built beforehand because it's going to make things a lot easier. So can I just get a show of hands of people that have like some sort of sales Android built, whether it be the any niche one, click and deploy. So Zara, well done, Mark, Ainsley, Andrew, Barry, Larry, Chris, Derek, Mark, Simon. Wow. That's good. That's a good percentage. I think Dan Kaufman's got one built as well. So the, the thing is that I really wanted you guys to do is to come, you know, with your, your zaps ready. You've got your um, chat GPT account and you've got everything kind of into LinkedIn ready to go. We're going to be dropping a snapshot at the end of this. No, I just wanted to make sure that you, you have something. So I'm glad to hear it. Okay. Some people are saying they haven't completed their Android yet. Um, I couldn't be bothered kind of making short links for these, but um, I'll get Nat to pop them in the chat now. These both, um, this is the Any Niche Android and the um, ChatGPT Fueled Sales Android, aka the Wolf of Wall Street Android. And both of these you can use in your, your business right now. Um, and there's full step-by-step -step instructions on both of these. They're free. And you can um, go through the training and get everything set up there. And it's pretty quick to do. All right. So and that's going to drop them in the link now. Um, I would recommend checking them out if you can. If you need, if you're a bit more of a newbie and you need kind of like step-by-step um, -step instructions, then this is perfect for you. Does that make sense, everyone? All right. Some people are almost there. All right. Good. Okay. So what are we going to teach today? three things really i'm going to keep i don't think it's going to be a super long one unless you've got lots of questions um we're going to talk about what the offer is for database reactivation how we're positioning it and how you guys and girls can get a client this week all right this is such a hot offer so pumped about what we can do here um so getting clients on this is going to be super easy because the offers are no lose situation from the client okay we'll talk about more about that in a sec we're going to talk about our magic double hand raiser that gets a 30% plus response rate on SMS that our uh, Android sends out. Okay. And that's insane for SMS um, content rates and reply rates. And we're going to show you how to go under the radar so you can get people to respond that wouldn't normally because they're sick of being hit up by spam, SMSs, et cetera. All right. <laughs> and then we're going to go through with Jamie a step by step build plus delivery of the snapshot and prompt. So we'll be giving you some instructions on a Google, Google Doc at the end of this call as well. And that makes sense. All right. So um, let's move on to the first thing, which is how to get a client this week. All right. And most of you on this call have already got clients or have people that they've transacted with in the past that have probably got a database, all right? So I'm not going to teach anything about how to land old clients today, but I'm going to show you how to approach past clients. It's so simple and so easy, and it means you're going to get a database reactivation client this week if you just implement it, all right? But the first thing is, what is your offer going to be, okay? And I'll tell you a, a couple of different offers we've been making for database reactivation. The first one is, um, which we're not doing anymore, by the way, is a 5K upfront cost plus a 6K second balloon payment when the client puts 25K worth of sales in the bank. All right. Yeah, it's a good offer. It's a no brainer for clients because they know that they're going to um, make 25K with it. Uh, but on the other hand, they have to stump up 5K. So we started disqualifying quite a few people that. We're a little bit suspect with that type of um, upfront payment. So what we've gone to now is a 50% profit share with no front payments, if that makes sense. So let's say we approach, and we've just done this um, uh, with, I don't know who's on the call today, but he approached me um, and he said, listen, I've got a, a 70,000 people on my um, database who have opted in for a business loan and some of them converted into a business loan, but others haven't. So 
I need to re-engage these 70,000 people and I want to sell them a business loan again. So my offer was, okay, let's, let's do this. Zero upfront cost to you, but we're going to share 50% commission on the 50% the, the 50 of the commission when it comes in. So let's say um, uh, the client closes a deal. The average commission is about 1,500 pounds, and we're going to take 750 pounds of that. Okay, so if you look at the size of the, the database and we only, you know, we run it once and we only convert 10 people out of 70,000, which is barely any, then we still make seven and a half thousand pounds. Does that make sense? If you've got any questions about that, just pop them in now. How are you verifying the profit the client makes? So we would get access to their CRM. Do you trust them? Yes, I do. So we only work with people we trust. Okay, so it's a 50% profit share, zero cost up front. We probably share, depending on the size of the client, the SMS costs with them. And yeah, it's a trust thing. It's 100% a trust thing. But in Roya, which is our um, next level program, we have like contracts and all that type of stuff and how to do due diligence to make sure you're working with the right people. Okay, but I'm not going to go into that today. But it is quite a quite a standard thing to do for database reactivation. It's been done for years. It's just that we've got ChatGBT to make our um, stuff much easier. Okay. All right, cool. So once you've got your offer dialed in and you know what you're going to offer people, then here is the way that I do it. And it's pretty simple. That's what I said. We're doing performance-based sharing 50-50, the profit on each deal. So once you have your offer down, email or SMS your current and past clients with this, okay? And get your pen and notepad ready, although there will be um, a Google Doc at the end of this call. Okay, so because you already know them and you've worked with them before, my first email would be something like, hey, Joe, long term no speak, how's biz? Right, we know that because they know us and like us and trust us, they're going to get back. It doesn't really matter what you say as long as you kind of touch base with them. And once they come back, what you want to do then is do a little bit of due diligence, all right, to see, you know, check out their Facebook profile, LinkedIn, see where they kind of hang out or see what their business is doing in the news or whatever that might be. Um, you'll be able to find something, right? And personalize it back. So I'm just using an example here. I see on Facebook, I'm not stalking you. I promise you have just moved house. Congratulations. But the house is still full of boxes. What a nightmare. I know you are busy with the move, but I was curious as, it, as to if you have any unconverted leads, leads on your database, we can reignite with our new chat GPT sales Android. It's a 100% performance-based backend type deal. I can show it to you. you, you it, I can show you how it re-engages, qualifies, and books the call for your sales team if you want, question mark. Okay, so this second email is just kind of presenting the offer and kind of dangling the carrot, if that makes sense, because we know that most businesses have a database and we know that most of the time they give up on those leads and haven't got the time to get back to them at all. So if we're able to make some sales for them from their database, then they're like, well, why the hell not? It's a um, backend type deal, performance-based, and they reply. Okay, Most of the time they're going to come back and say yes. And then when they do, drop a Zoom link. Does that make sense? And honestly, this works so easily. And so, well, it's pretty basic. The key is to do a little bit of personalization that show that you care and make sure you get back to them with something unique. All right. But the offer is so good. Very easy to get clients this way. Okay. Good. Which home services business would this work best for? Um, it works for any business. Any business that's got an offer. Okay. All right. My point is that the offer is so strong, it doesn't really matter what you say on that first outreach message because they already know you and like you and trust you. All right. So now you've got a Zoom all booked in. What you want to do is get you your demo ready for the call. Okay. And that's exactly why Jamie's here. 
and showing showing you how we do it with um, a platform, this this URL here called platform.openai.com. Right, so with that in mind, I'm gonna stop my share and let you come in, Jamie, and have a crack at that and show people what we do here. Yeah, sure. So instead of building it out inside of Zapier, what we typically do is just go straight to platform.openai.com and put in the prompt here. Now, if you do want to hide the prompt, you can download an add-on from Google Chrome um, called Style Sheet. And there are some, some tutorials on how to hide certain elements on a page. All I do is click this button, the prompt's gone, and I can just begin the demonstration. Yeah, so back. Let, me, let me just stop you there, right? So if you're imagining now that you're on the Zoom call with the client and we're about to show them how well um, this will work for their business, right? We're going to say, imagine you're a lead on, on your database and you get a message that gets them to respond. Watch how AI comes in and closes for you. That's right. But we don't want to see the prompt on the left because that's just going to confuse them and we don't want to give away our um, IP. Does that make sense, everyone? Cool. Continue on, Jamie. Awesome. So within this prompt itself, right, you need to remember with go high level, you initiate that conversation first with an SMS message. And I believe we're gonna go into what those um, SMS messages we use to um, reactivate the date space a little bit later. Yep. But what you can see here is I say in the prompt, this is the message they're responding to. Therefore, omit introductions and begin conversation. So I'm just replying back to that message saying, yes, you know, my name is Jamie and I got a life insurance quote in July. The AI will kick into gear and it will send basically what's known as our second um, second database reactivation message. Because thank goodness I had you on a post-it note stuck to my computer to give you a call but didn't want to disturb you without checking first. Are you still looking for life insurance, Jamie? I can go actually had a conversation about it today. Is there anything specific that you'd like in your life insurance policy to do or cover? Let me know so I can provide you with the best options. There we go. And that's it. You can add in more questions, right? The reason our prompt is a little bit light is because the clients have already qualified this lead data. So we don't need to be requalifying them. We just need to see that they're one, interested in life insurance. And two, is there anything specific that they would require in their policy to yeah. bring them to that next step? So or they've they've already opted in, right? So they've seen an ad and they've opted in and they've probably told us that they're over 50, they're a non-smoker mm. and whatever else you would turn a, a life insurance lead, right? So we don't have yeah. to do that again. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we've got the data, so we don't want to be asking them as many questions as possible. We just kind of want to soft qualify them, maybe qualify them based on motivation. How motivated are they to actually get a life insurance policy versus, you know, um, how you typically qualify a life insurance policy and then just get them to schedule a call back. So the options to get them to schedule a call back are one, send them over a calendar link where they can book in for a call or if you're working with a lot of big clients, which we are, they won't work by an appointment-based system. They will typically have a dialer software. And all you need to do is um, ask, basically ask them what day and time they want the call back and send that over to the client um, dial, dialing system. They'll have a tech department, so they've got a dialing system who can help you out with that part. Yeah, so... Um, we're not going to go into this today. It's a type of stuff we teach in Roya, right? But we will typically, when they say they want to call back today at 3 p.m., then we're able to to um, get ChatGPT to understand that and then web book that lead over to the dialer system so it's called back at 3 p.m., right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So um, we can also save you money whether um, when would be a good time to call back to discuss your options in more detail. So um, 
that's the that's where we would we would typically use um, our Android that we teach in Roya to be able to do that, right? Yeah. When we book it over. All right. Cool. All right. So, thanks, Jamie. So, hopefully, you lot can understand that you've booked in. You've kind of put the hand raiser email out to your client. They're interested because why wouldn't they be? The leads are dead to them. And then you're showing them a demo of what it might look like using what Jamie just showed us, okay? So they'll be able to get excited, see the power of AI. Then you then you kind of make your offer. 50% profit share, they've got nothing to lose. We have a contract of stuff that we send over to them. Um, and then we close a deal and we go and build the Android um, ready for the campaign inside our level, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute, okay? So let's talk about our... Um, move on to the next thing, which is what we call our magic double hand raiser. Okay. And you guys, girls are going to love this. All right. We, we need to remember that when we're sending a um, hand raiser out to our client's database, it's not to sell life insurance or sell the offer. Okay. It's typically just a conversation starter. And a lot of people that do this get it very wrong because it comes across spammy and people will just ignore it. In fact, they might even report you. Okay, so we figured out a way to get around this and it's called a, a, a two-step hand raiser. I, don't, I haven't seen anyone doing this um, in the marketing world and it, it works like gangbusters, okay? So the first SMS that goes out, we've got, we use Sarah as the name of our person, make-believe person on behalf of the client. We say, it's Sarah here from, uh, flexible.com or whatever the name of the client's business is. It's Sarah here from Clients Biz here. Is there a, is this the same name that got a niche quote from us in month? Okay. It's Sarah here from Flexible. Is this the same um, Jamie that got a uh, solar quote from us in June? Does that make sense? So it really kind of opens the door for them to respond and say yes or no. Okay, because we're personalizing it with name. We've got the niche quote in there. And also we've got the month that they inquired, which we can pull from the client's database pretty easily. Does that make sense, everyone? So it's very kind of kind of cheeky. It's not cheeky, like it's just a really good way to get a response. I think it's genius actually. Okay, so once they get back with a yes or a no, let's just go down the yes route. Thank goodness I had you on a post-it note stuck to my computer to give you a call but didn't want to disturb you without checking first. Are you still looking? Okay, so I really like this as well because we personalize it. Yeah, they probably haven't got a post-it note stuck to their computer, but... They've got their equivalent of that within their dialer system or their CRM or whatever, right? So we're just personalizing it. We're also pre-framing them to give you a call. Does that make sense? So if they get back with yes, they know that they're going to get a call, right? Because we're pre-framing it in this SMS. All right. So we've been doing this. Um, we've been testing this lately and it absolutely kills it. Okay. All right. Um, does that make sense, everyone? Jamie, I'm not sure. Ah, sorry, John, I don't know where you got that intel from, mate. Um, okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. This is pretty cool stuff. Very easy to get going and testing yourself. Okay. All right. So after they get back to the to this one, are you still looking? Yes, no. Then we get our um, chat GPT database Android to take over, which is built in high level. Okay. Does everyone follow here? It's hopefully I'm not confusing you too much, but you're following what we're doing. Okay, good. Right. So Jamie, with that, that's your cue to share your screen again and we'll show how we can take 
basically what we, we saw we saw in the um, demo that we that we showed the client before into um, higher level so you can start running the campaign. Go ahead. Awesome. So just as a quick FYI, um, when you click this link, if you you will need to enter your information here to get access to the snapshot. If you've already got high level, they always kind of hide it underneath this button, but you'll need to click that link there to get it into your account. Yeah. With that said, we can show you a bit of an example of the evolution of the hand raiser. So we're doing this for what's known as the Eco4 niche in the UK. A little bit of an overview of it. The government's got a lot of money there to give to people in low socioeconomic conditions for free heating upgrades in their home. And this one says, I don't think we qualify, but the AI actually goes through and correctly qualifies her. Um, and it's as simple as that, person responds, there's a bunch of qualifying questions that it asks, and then they book in a call. That was our first one. And then we evolved it to the post-it note, so you can kind of see where we're getting this idea for the post-it note. Yeah. And you can see this person didn't respond. But oh, wow, look at that message. We've got the bump message. Thank you for remembering me. I never yeah. got the grant for the house. We're getting thanked to get back in touch with them. That's awesome. I love that. And then again, with the bump message, bringing in another person here. So sometimes they won't respond to that first message. And the snapshot which we built and giving and um, we're giving you, um, we've adapted the original AI workflow with what's known or what I'm calling anyway, bump messages. So yeah. what it is, is if someone doesn't respond, we have a timeout of three hours we have yep. a wait step so we don't want to be sending messages midnight early morning and it'll send a bump message so it's just like saying bumping this up in case you got busy before and then again we've got another message another message and you can even just duplicate this again if you really want to add you know a, a fourth message into this but as soon as they respond they're added to the workflow and the next workflow, which is the original um, AI workflow you guys will have known um, and be familiar with. And the other change to this is if they stop conversing with the AI, the AI now has bump messages. So it's like it brings them back into the conversation. How it works is quite simple. When your campaign starts, all leads start here in the pipeline. As soon as they respond, they move over to this lead responded column. And then once they qualify or if they book a call, they move to one of these two columns. Now, this is the only thing you need to consider when setting this up. If they book a call, um, is that the point you want to export it to a client? Or is it when they get qualified? So, for example, they've shown that they're interested and um, they've asked to schedule a call back. There are ways to export it as soon as the lead reaches this stage, and we'll go into that in a second. So that's just a bit of an overview of how this works. All the setup requires is in settings. You come over to custom values, and this is all you need to do is update these nine values. So is this when so, they upload the snapshot in the link that we give them after this call? Yeah. So they've got the snapshot inside their account, and they're ready to start building it for their niche, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So AI bump SMS one, what you can do is we put this document together with the prompt we're using. And you can see that we have AI bump message. So it'll be name, are you still there? And it's just editing this. And when someone reaches that condition in the workflow, it will send them that message if they haven't responded to the AI for in a while. That can be put the name in there is because they already know they already know the name. Yeah. Um it's just I can't get the because it needs to be something like something like that. 
oops, I put it in the wrong space, but you get the That's idea. That's all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so there's a difference. There's AI bump message, and then there's just normal bump message. So this is pre them speaking with the AI. So this is you've sent out the original hand raiser. They haven't responded. You want to try and get their attention. So it's just editing here and then looking in this sheet for some um, ideas for what to say here. Can I just clarify, Jamie? So, so we got, we, can I just clarify? Yeah. Okay. So we've got, for those of you who might be a little bit lost, we've got the hand raiser, the double hand raiser thing, the magic hand raiser, which we spoke to you about. If they don't get back to any of those um, messages or the first message and they don't get back at all, then we have bumps that happen at um, different times. I don't know. Did you say three hours, right? Yeah. Um, and we've got uh, two or three of those, I think. And, and what happens is that it, they're just designed to get the conversation started. All right. And then you've got the AI bump messages, which come in after they've started responding to the, uh, to the Android and you want them and they stopped for whatever reason, they've gone to pick the kids up from school or they're cooking dinner. Right. And, and then we want to get the AI to bump. So two different type of bumps, but they achieve the same thing to get the conversation restarted. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Just to kind of like visually show you what happens. We send in the original hand raiser. If they don't respond, they're getting a bump message. If they don't respond to that, they're going to get the next bump message. So we can see here, custom value. And over yep. here, custom value. So whatever you want this SMS to say, say, all you need to do is update the custom value as opposed to going into each and every individual workflow and um, you know praying that you've got the, the right message in the right place. Yep. Perfect. So what you also need to do is set up the, the actual um, Android itself. So you'll look for Webhook Chat GPT 3 I'm sure many of you will be familiar with this if you've already um, set this up before. You want to go to Zapier, and there'll be an option to create a new Zap. You want to select the trigger as Webhook. We want to choose the action as catch hook. Continue, continue. You then want to grab this web hook, come back into the account, click update. This always takes us a while to update. It usually breaks on us in the middle of a call. <laughs> Hopefully not today. And then finally, what you need to do is create a, a fake contact. Click save. Once this contact is open, you want to go down to workflows, click add, and click test webhook. So it should be right up at the top. You click add. This will then send data into your zap. And here we go. All we're then doing is looking for chat GPT. Click conversation, continue, choose the account. Continue. Use a message. We're just searching for lead response. Memory key, we choose email. Username, so just select first name, assistant name, Sarah, and then- uh, that's, the, the, that's the fake name that we had, right? In the yeah. messages, yeah. And then the prompt itself. So what we mentioned here is some additional instructions so yellow, you want to modify. Um, we're using UK idiom, British dialect. So that kind of gives the message a little bit of a, it, it localizes the message. So you want to change yep. that and make sure that it's localized to where you are, your training. So this also kind of gives the AI a little bit of direction for when objections happen. It does ask some interesting questions to handle objections. 
Um, so what's the challenger side? Is that sales training? Yeah, it's another method yeah. of um, sales training. Okay. You said the, you said on the call before that sometimes we use spin selling, sometimes we use the Wolf of Wall Street. You found the challenger <laughs> sale to be good. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth testing. It's it's very slight difference, but it can make um you know well well the difference for each niche. Some sometimes you get someone who's a little bit the AI is a little bit more salesy, which is good for certain niches. And sometimes yep. you just want it to be a little bit more softer. Yeah. Qualified prospect section. So I think we've done a lot of training on like prompts, but you just want to have your second um hand raiser here. And then they can pretty much call, they can pretty much paste that word for word, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. And then yep. just add, add in the additional questions, or we phrase it as a statement, um, as opposed to a question. Um, here. So whatever else you want the AI to ask, basically phrase it as a statement rather than a question in here. Then you want to replace the outbound message and add in some FAQs. And that's that's as simple as it is. So we'd copy this, come into here. For the time being, um, I'm currently experimenting with 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 on top P as well. Just click continue, test that. And then whilst this is testing, we want to jump back into our Go High Level account, click on settings and grab the API key. So there we go. Thank goodness I had you in a post-it note stuck to my computer to give you a call. So we can see it's working there. Finally, all we're really doing now is adding it to Go High Level. You want to click add update contact Continue, choose account, connect new account. We're pasting in that API key, which I just grabbed before. Continue, and then all we need to do is add in the email address. Mark lead as false. And chat GPT. You want to add in the response, which we can see here, reply. This this changes, by the way, what it's called. So on the webinar, this will say reply, but it could be named something else. All you're looking for, and an easy way to figure this out, is come into here, click on test, and where you see the content, thank goodness, you should be able to see something which looks like that um, on the field. So we can see it says, Thank goodness here. So that's how you know to select the right one. So just click test that. And that is it connected. Nice. Now, so um yeah. So continue on. So what's left to do with this? Um is you want to custom values. So you want to um, add the webhook to send to your client and you want to add that in here. So however your client gets their leads, get them to create your webhook and add it in here. Um, then how you trigger this, right? So let's say we qualify the lead and we want to export it. We want to go over to export lead to client. You see, this is where the information would be. And you, you want to change this stage to whatever stage you want um, the, the, the lead to be exported to them. So either client qualified or book the call. Nice. How the leads move to this step is through lead is qualified calendar or schedule so it's it's similar what it is is we have um go high level checking um for chat gpt to say schedule 
So this this keyword triggers someone being moved to client qualified in the pipeline. The only reason ChatGPT would say schedule is because in our prompt we say when you are when you qualify the client, ask them when do you want to schedule a call back. So we use that keyword schedule because it is unlikely to come up naturally before ChatGPT is trying to book a call. So as soon as a client gets that stage schedule, we know that they've got to a point of being qualified and they're ready to export to um, our clients. That makes sense. So it just moves them to lead qualified, which then triggers export client, export and lead to client. So I'll go back into this again. Of course, go high levels being slow. Yeah. But so sorry, we we nearly finished this this part anyway. So while we're waiting for that, Jamie, mm. um, so this is everything set up and ready to hit go, right? To send that first SMS. Yeah. To their database. So how are you? How are you grabbing? Well, let's say it's a um like this business loan guy that we have that has seventy thousand contacts. Mm. How are you grabbing that data and? pulling it over to what we're doing and what what the clients think about sharing their database and how are you kind of handling that objection with what, what you're doing? With um, sharing their database? Yeah. So I think, was it you that said what what you, you're doing at the moment is just calling it a white label version of their own agency or their mm -hmm. own business, right? So you're able to put their logo up into the top corner of high level or whatever it is. So right, it's their business, it's their it's their sub account, it, it's theirs, right? So there shouldn't be yeah. any objections to you taking the database because you can give them full transparency on everything that they're seeing in there, right? Well, apart yeah. from that, yeah. You're operating underneath their umbrella. Um, that's that's the way to kind of like think about it and position it. Like you're you're not doing it separate separate to them. You are kind of like a mini department within the business in a way. Yep. Without yep. having a boss. Yeah. <laughs> Mind yep. game sport, that's that's how it's being positioned. Um yep. but yeah. Um where was where we were up to was just we showed how a lead gets qualified. And what we can see is as soon as a lead moves to this client qualified stage, it just gets exported to your client so when i say you really only need to update the values that's all you need to do and i think it's quite self-explanatory yep you're using a booking link you just add that in here update the content webhook to send to your client and obviously the main chat gpt webhook just to kind of like summarize how it looks from a visual perspective New lead starts here. As soon as they respond, they move here. As soon as they become qualified, they move here. And it's at this point that you would also look to also export the lead to your client. So it's a good way to kind of manage what's going on. Perfect. And Jamie. Well, yeah. Um, how, like, where do you instigate the first lot of uh, SMSs to go to go out once you have the client's database uploaded into high level? What does that look like? So is that the time that we schedule and the, the messages to go out? Yeah, so we have, we, what do we get a CSV file from the client? Okay, yeah. And, and upload it. And then when we go, let's, let's start it. Let's do it on a 10 a.m. on Monday morning. Mm. What does that look like? So all we do is we click import contacts right here. Then what you're looking to do is upload the CSV file by yep. clicking here. Now, what will happen is go high level will give you an option. It's typically in the bottom right corner to click and it says create a smart list. You can also add a tag. So for example, if you want, if client gave you a database of 1000 leads, and you wanted to kind of test the first opening message, um, you'd maybe grab a hundred of those leads yeah. and add a tag to it called first run. So you can kind of see, you know, um, you can kind of see in the pipeline where the distribution of the leads are by simply just searching, you know, 
your first run. And if they've got that tag, it will show them where they are here. And that's a very good and easy visual way to kind of get metrics for how well a message is responding or not responding. Um, but what we do, so let's say we've got all of our leads here and they've, they've been added in. You yep. click this here to select all records. You click add to campaign slash workflow. You click OK, proceed. You'd select GPT conversation start 1.1. This doesn't really matter what you're calling the action. And you'd click add all at schedule time. You'd click, for example, today. And then what I typically do is I choose 6 p.m. at a random minute. And I'd click tick and click add to campaign slash workflow. That's how you initiate the um, database reactivation. Um, the reason we've been choosing 6 p.m. is because if you think when leads are typically generated, it's usually in the evening. So it's an evening time, but it's not too late so where it seems a little bit rude to be messaging them. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. What about... Um... I don't know whether you've covered this in the training. It just dawned on me, right? We are pulling the month through in the first fundraiser, right? Is this Jamie that um, inquired about life insurance in June? Mm. How do you how do you pull that field through from the client's database? So, what you would do is you create a custom field here, and what you would name it is, and you choose single line next. Yep. And you'd call it a lead date. Select contact, click save. That's it. And we'll just edit this information in here. So lead date, and I would put July as an example. Then what you need to do in your hand raise a message, so where you add in that hand raiser message, so I haven't actually gone over that part, but it's, it wasn't yeah. evident. It was in GPT conversation start 1.1. It's this confirm with yes message right here. And all you would do, so do we have that hand raiser in here? Yeah, it's down there somewhere. Yeah. I, it's Sarah from client's biz. Is this the same custom value, contact, first name? I got a, uh, I'll leave niche quote from us in. And we go custom value, contact, scroll all the way down, custom fields, lead date. And that will just change it to um, the lead date. And we just click save action. See, that's how right. we would add that in. So we so that is pulling the the actual lead date in from when the customer came into the client's database, right? Yeah, yeah. As lo as long as it's saved in a field. Um, yes. Give me a second. I'm just going to swap to Google Drive. just to show how it should be formatted. You might have to mess with the client's data, but, um, CSV file a little bit, right? In order to pull that through and add a new column or something. Yeah. So what you do is you have it set up like so. Oops. And then you just need it underneath here, et cetera, et cetera. So it need to be, it would need to say the actual month, like so. Yeah. Now, if it is in a weird, if it is in a format like this, what you can do is just download this, 
uploaded to ChatGPT, um, the actual um, web chat, and you can ask it to change it just to the calendar month for every lead, and it'll do it for you in about two minutes. Like it doesn't. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So that's how you structure it, and you're just downloading that as a CSV to upload yeah. and to go high level. Yeah. So they might have to mess with the CSV file a little bit once they've got it from the client, which mm. isn't a problem. But I think it is definitely, you know, that personalization and pre-framing um, to make them feel special like we did on that lead that you showed us before for remembering mm. them. I think it's important that we do that because that type of stuff can make or break a campaign. Right? People get it wrong when they're sending out a hand raiser that goes, hey, J hey, Jamie, are you still looking for life insurance? You know, like you will get some back, but if we're able to, it's very salesy, right? Very mm. kind of direct, and people don't necessarily want that because we want it to be a conversation starter, not a, um, you know, not a hard sell initially. Okay, so, um, oh, and the other thing is you want to introduce the fact that um, it's Sarah from the name of the business as well because clients might have um, applied for, sorry, the prospect might have applied for life insurance eight months ago. They're not going to remember the name of the business. And they don't want it to be a cold outreach. So we want to make sure that they kind of, it rings a bell and it tweaks the name of the business um, so they can get back to us. That's important as well. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to say is that, um, you know, all this stuff we're doing here with Jamie is like just so exciting and so good. We also have to remember that there's going to be people that are able to do this as well over time, right? What's going to make or break you and your success is being able to um, to really understand, you know, the copy that goes behind it and the first hand raiser. That's what's going to really make a difference. Okay, so do you know that's plain copywriting and common sense. Um, so you got to make sure that you kind of got a good grasp of that before you even start the campaign. Does that make sense, bro? All right, where are we now? Um, so is that you, Jamie? You're yeah, done? that's yeah, that's me, Don. Cool. All right. So we have put together for you lot a snapshot, the prompt and the emails. If we click here, that's going to open up. Jamie was showing you this before. That's the full prompt. I can have to change the bits that um, Jamie said. Here's the bump messages. Here's the AI bump messages. Here's the snapshot. Okay, if you are on this call and you haven't got high level. Um, I'd be, I'd love it if you could join through our link. Okay. And please, if you do, um, please, uh, email me here because so I have, um, a database for activation client contract that I want to give you as a huge thank you. Um, these, this is the same one that our ROI students use to kind of lock up the client so they can't wriggle out of the profit share, um, or steal your IP and all that type of stuff. Okay. So that's really important to get that done too. All right. Um, here's the email that I spoke to you guys about to land your current clients. Honestly, if you've got clients, try this right after this call. I promise you, you're going to have a database reactivation flight by the end of the week. Okay. It's that easy. Um, and here's the double hand raiser, um, the magic double hand raiser, which is going to make all the dif difference for you as well. Okay. Uh, where am I? All right, so we're on to questions now. Um, I'm just going to start reading them out. Um, please type in the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, all right. Uh, and, uh, so the WhatsApp question, I don't. I think you kind of can, but it's not like, is it native at the moment, Jamie, with um, high level? It's not at the moment. Um, it will be, I think it's WhatsApp for business. And yep. WhatsApp for business is kind of go. it's a little bit incongruent to what we're doing because yep. WhatsApp needs to approve your outgoing message as as far as I know. And yep. it needs to be in a specific format. So, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people are asking about WhatsApp and I'm really happy when it does come through, right? But, the numbers we're talking here, you know, 750 pounds for us per sale, like the, the cost of the SMS and the um, 
you know, all of the zaps and stuff like that is just tiny compared to the profit we're making. So, and even if you are worried about it, ask the client to pay for those costs or at least split it with them. Okay. How large should a potential client database be in order to be a good fit? Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we, we try and work with at least 5,000, but if you are starting out and you've got a client with a thousand old solar prospects or whatever, then go with them first. And the other thing that I would say is that it's always best to work with customers rather than no contacts or, or contacts that haven't converted, right? So let's say we've got the 70,000 people on this business loan um, campaign that we're doing. They might have 500 people that bought or whatever that or 1,000 people that bought out of those 70,000 that were a sale. We would want to run... If the client has an upsell or a cross sell, we would want to want to run run to them first because they definitely remember who the who the client is because they were sold with them. Okay, so if they're a solar prospect and they bought solar panels through ABC Solar, then they're gonna one hundred percent respond when ABC Solar send out a um, SMS. It's just easier to sell to people that are already been sold in the past. Does that make sense? It's an important point to remember. And for those of you who are asking. We don't we don't work with like old lists. Okay, so you can go and buy a database of a hundred thousand people that might be interested in solar panels, right, from some data sharing company. But we I this very mal, this might work for them. Okay. It might work. But for us, we want to work with people that are with a much higher chance of converting. Um, because we're going to look like a rock star for the client and we're going to get paid for. Does that make sense? Brian said, how long is the back and forth with chat GPT? Do you have a range of responses you you do before asking to schedule? Um, uh, responses, well, I think, Brian, you're talking about when the lead is um, being uh, re-engaged, right? So remember how I was saying that we've already qualified um, we've already qualified the lead previously when they opted in to the ad or whatever it is. So we already know all of their details. Right, this is just whether they want to call back. But of course, if you are running an offer where they need to be qualified again, then you can have a number of questions in that prompt that Jamie showed before. Why expert via webhook versus sending the client a tech broke email? Jamie? Just gets it into their CRM. I mean, uh, if you're working with someone with a large database, most of them will have a CRM. Most of them will want it to be webhooked or API'd into their CRM. Um, that's it, really. Yeah. Cool. Is there any way to use the sales Android with other apps rather than Zapier, for instance, Pabbly Connect? Yeah, that can be all done, right, Jamie? Yeah, it can. But we just um, instead of creating twenty different trainings, with we just stick to Zapier for the training because most people, you know, are comfortable and familiar with it. Yep. How do you get it so it doesn't address them by their first name in every message? You remove in. Inside Zapier, just remove any instance of their first name and add a rule not to ask for their name, and it will never mention their name ever. Perfect. All right. Um, blank. Someone saying blank screen. Maybe I wasn't sharing my screen at the time. Okay. Um, not hundred percent clear how ChatGPT agent gets trained in sales and fine-tuned if the unusual questions, objections get thrown in from the leads? Good question. So it uses it uses information it knows about a certain topic. When you're writing a prompt, what you're really doing is helping to guide the AI in how to construct its answer. So if you're saying for it to construct the um, by using a sales framework, it will typically, you know, follow it by via that sales framework. The only thing or the only addition I would say to that is the more you try and control the AI, the less it's likely to do everything you want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, Al, the question you're answering is the power of AI, really. You can't really explain it. They just, that's why it's so Good. That's why it's such a big opportunity at the moment. Um, will you be sending out a recording? Yeah, Michael, Thursday on YouTube, we'll be premiering this. Um, I think that's probably dropped the, sh the link in the doc. 
any help or suggestions with doing cold outreach to sell the bike? Um, I mean, in Roya, like that's what we do inside that program, which is really how to run ads to it, how to do follow-ups, how to uh, do hand raises. Because once you have a database of of leads, right, or B to B to B leads, then um you can send them a hand raiser and get people to come in and close for your offer. Okay, so cold outreach we usually do with Facebook ads. I don't bother with um you know cold outreach via mass email or whatever. Some each their own, but I do I do Facebook ads really. Um with Go High Levels changes to the inbuilt chat GPT, is Zapier still required? Hoyts has asked Jamie. Yeah. Um it's it's good like um, what they're doing, but you just don't have a way to give you don't have a way to add a prompt into um go high levels AI conversation bot. So that's the main reason why this way is superior for this method. You couldn't you couldn't um do what we're doing today with the native stuff, right? Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't do it. There's no way. All right. So you create a sub account in high level for each client, but you don't give them access to it. You're sending the lead to a Google sheet to upload into their dialer. I don't think it's even a Google sheet, right? It goes straight into their CRM. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All happens automatically, Dave. Um, Will you have a separate prompt for two types of leads the client has, ones that bought and ones that weren't able to close before? Well, yeah, Jericho, I guess you definitely would, right? Because like the people that haven't bought before are being pointed to the initial offer and the ones that have been bought before are pointed to the um, new offer. But not much different, right? Because remember, we're not trying to sell or close with the um, hand raises. We're just trying to get them to have a conversation about whatever the offer A or B is, okay? Have a conversation and pass it to the client to call, to um, to close, does that make sense? I have a client with a database of 21K in real estate investing, but his list is mainly French. How would this work for an English campaign? Jamie? How would this work for, for um, people in French? Who's yeah, you can French? do it in French easily, right? Yeah. I mean, we've got an AI bot um, set up in Canada. And the first question it asks is, do you speak English or parlez-vous français? Uh, well, yeah. probably butchered that. But however they respond, um, <laughs> It responds in their the native language, so it's doable. Nice. How do you handle an objection handling about spamming or bothering customers? Well, Chris, you would um you would show them the hand raises that we use, right? They're definitely not spamming. We're coming across very lightly. In fact, you saw what um the message Jamie showed before, which I haven't seen before. They actually thanked us for reaching out to them. So I'd forgotten. All right. So it's not spammy at all, really. Um, okay. How would you do a 50% deal when a client who has really long sales processes would not realize the commission until late in the year? James, good question. Um, so in Roya, again, this is what we teach is that we, 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 we tell people to, um, uh, and get paid earlier. So, uh, over here in the UK, we've done a lot of stuff in the debt industry. Um, and basically it take, it can take one or two months or even longer to turn a lead into a, a like a, a an IVA or a debt consolidation plan. Uh, we don't want to get paid that long. So what we did was negotiated with the client to get paid at whatever that kind of trigger point is um, in that sales process. And that was what they call a pack out, right? Which, which sometimes happens on the same day. Okay, it's like a signature or whatever. They can use EcoSign or whatever process that looks like. Um, and they're more than happy to pay that because they know their numbers after that signature comes in. So rather than getting paid six hundred pounds commission when the when the IVA goes through, we would get paid three hundred pounds because fifty percent drop off between um, uh, signature and actual IVA. Does that make sense? All right, good. Yeah, Jeff said, can the bot converse in language other than English? Yes, it can. Um, there's the link there. Sorry, guys. Okay. For the doc, the snapshot on the resource doc, you've not given that. Has everyone got this? Sorry. Um, 
for dead leads, you can push for 50% profit. What profit split would you put for when selling up sell offers to their existing clients? Uh, it's just a negotiation mark, but I'll push for 50% again. Um, if they haven't done it uh, and they don't know how to do it, then anything that comes into their dialer system to get called again that comes from us, we deserve to get 50% for. And I would not knock down on that. That's why I, I um, talk about one of my emails was about being the chooser, not the chosen, right? This is a partnership that we're doing here with the clients. It's not about um, them paying for another marketing expense, right? If I start getting pushback or clients that are being dicks, um, then I usually just walk away from it. Okay? And you get more respect that way. Uh, so, because there's plenty of fish in the in the ocean, okay? Um, using the native stuff, all right. Um, how does a contract for this type of service look? Uh, Bruno, that's in Roya, mate. Um, do you have a replay? Yeah, so the replay will be on uh, uh, Thursday. How can we work around the canned spam issue? Uh, Jamie, do you know about that? I don't know every individual like regulation, but I feel like if our hand raiser might not break it because it's kind of spams about being promotional. And I think the question would be, is is that opening message promotional or is it, you know, um, supportive? Because if we're all we're doing is we're asking, is that the same person who got a quote from us? It's not exactly being spammy. It's quite, you know, just checking that you're still there. No. Kind yeah, of no. yeah. Do you have any broad conservative benchmarks for response rates and booking rates? Um, well, it definitely depends on the industry. Uh, but Jamie, what did you do for the AK4? You just sent 100 tests out, right? How many responded and how many booked in a, a call? Yeah, so we started out with about 18 out of 100, and we managed to get up to around about 30, 35 people um, just optimizing that message. And there was, from those 35, we'd get about five would book a call or would get, get to that qualified, you know, um, qualified stage. Yeah. So 5% out of 100 would be pretty good. I think that would be exceptional, actually. <laughs> um but yeah, 30% response rate. And depending on your offer, you know, you can get five out of those 30 to book into appointment. That'd be incredible. Do you know what I mean? Like we're talking, we're going to make a lot of money if we can do that because with 10,000 leads, that's 3,000 conversations um, and maybe 150 sales out of that. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money at 750 pounds per sale. So yeah, it's a big opportunity. Uh, any suggestion of a applicable business industry? Um, any industry really that uh, has what is what are we looking for, Jamie? Over a thousand over a thousand dollars commission to be split split. Mm -hmm. um, they want to have fast turnaround times if possible to get paid on. Um, they want to have a good offer, uh, and they want to have a database of usually five thousand plus. Um, so there's no applicable industries. It works for any industry. Um, how are you handling A2P? I'm so sick of talking about A2P. <laughs> but Matt, yeah, we're, we're all A2P compliant. Um, and how are you doing it for the client? It's pretty fast now for the client, I believe, Jamie. So we're registering toll-free numbers. Having said that, I did see a horrible post by Sean saying that toll-free numbers now need to become A2P compliant by November the 11th or something so yeah it's a problem we're about to hit ourselves and unfortunately don't have an easy or simple solution but jamie was saying it's quite quick to get the clients atp registered now or is that an urban myth i'm not sure i'm, I'm off the loop with it i just remember it being a nightmare at the beginning of yeah. september no it's not anymore matt it's moved on it's much faster than that but everyone's got to do it so I don't see it being a big problem. I, I see it being a solution to them because their competitors aren't doing it. Mm. Um, can you provide examples of this instruction? Don't put questions here, put statements. Yeah, so basically um, in, the, in the actual prompt itself, we have 
uh, as a statement, ask them if there is anything important they'd like their policy to cover. What you need to do is think, what question would you like the AI to ask? In this instance, what I would like the AI to ask is, is there anything important you know that you'd like your policy to do or cover? And you just think of the question and you just turn it, I know it's easy for me to say this, but just turn it into a statement. The reason you don't want to put it as a question is the AI will become a little bit more robotic. It might even say, now question two, which just doesn't seem conversational. If you put it as a statement, it kind of creates its own questions to find out that piece of information and you just get a better conversation with the AI. I hope that like oh, answers cool. the, the question. Well, Jack says it takes 48 hours to get ATP done now for high level. That's awesome. There we go. How do you offer the sales Android for cold lead handling and qualification? Is that a separate contract or agreement? Um, Chris, I'm not sure what you mean there. Cold lead. So we, as I said before, we only do this for leads that have opted in. Um, we don't do it for uh, leads that have been bought by some kind of third-party company that sells data. Does that make sense? You can do it. I've never tried it, but um, the, the, it just won't be as profitable, I would say, because they're, they're further away from a sale because they don't even know the company or they haven't opted into the company. Um, the challenger sale, is that part of the snapshot already? That's it's the... Just... Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Matt. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just the prompt. Um, you can put spin selling there. It's just it's how we format our prompt. Um, it's unrelated to the snapshot. You just need to copy and paste that or edit it um, inside Zapier Chat GPT. Oh, all right. Um, there's there's Q and A's here. What is the biggest objection from the client? Um, to be honest, like. Uh, for me, like because I go into the call knowing that I'm not going to really budge on the 50% profit share and I explain to them, do they want to have 50% of nothing or 50% of 50 grand? Do you know what I mean? Like it's an easy, there's no real objection because these, these clients aren't doing anything with these leads as it stands. You know, those Eco4 guys that we're doing with Jamie, they, they, They've got a sales team of five guys. They've got a dialer and they call these people almost three times a day for a whole month, right? But they don't know how to do a good hand raiser. They just sell, 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 sell without really understanding the nature of starting a conversation with a, um, you know, by going under the radar like we do in our hand raisers. And they, they dial these leads for a month, three times a day. And then we send out a hand raiser and book five appointments from 100 leads. Do you know what I mean? So the, it's de the leads are dead to them. So there's no real objections. Um, and if there is, and they're being a really difficult client to work with, then I just walk away, right? Um, uh, in the US, we have the A2P regulation for SMS. Could this be, be done in DMs for Instagram rather than SMS? Well, I don't think you can send hand raises out to random people in Instagram, can you? Don't they have to have opted in? Um, I think this training, Justin, it really is just for um, SMS conversations, although you can do it in Messenger and all of that, but it's just a bit different, really. Uh, and then each is more difficult to set up than others. No, it's the same setup for um, every niche. You just have to change the prompt accordingly. Um, uh, Ernesto has asked, I tried Facebook lead as before. What do you do to improve the quality of the leads? Not really what the training's about today, mate. Um, you're not trying to get the leads at all. You, the leads are already there with the customer's database. Okay. Um, do you suggest going with uh, GPT-4 or 3.5, Jamie? Uh, 3.5. For the time being, um, GPT-4, I think it's like 10 times the cost. You can only send out so many messages per hour. Cool. All right. Um, will you present the same offer to new clients you don't know? Yeah, that's the cold stuff I was talking about that we teach in Roya Benoit. Um, 
100%. You know, the offer is exceptional. Um, on this webinar today, I'm just showing you how to get a client this week, and that's by approaching clients you've already already got. Okay. I hope you all you lot take action and, and send some of those um, emails out today because you all have clients by the end of the week, I promise you. All right. Where do I get the training for getting cold clients? That's in Roya. Oh, by the way, if you lot want to know what's in Roya and what's involved, it's kind of our paid program um, to be able to help you with, you know, the contracts and running cold ads and um, how to land clients in a, and how to really scale basically. Um, okay. But, you know, this should be enough for you, you lot today to get started. All right. And that shared the links again. Jamie, what's the Chrome extension again? It is called Stylebot. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. All right. Bruno's unrelated database reactivation um, question. What percentage of share would you ask for a performance-based meta ads campaign? Uh, this is kind of what we're doing with uh, Lawrence Howlett at the moment, right? Um, I mean, there's lots of ways to skin a cat on that one. If they're paying for the ad spend, then usually you can get around 10 to 25% of the profit rather than getting paid a retainer. All right. We're coming up 45 minutes is a pretty quick one. Um, any other questions before I go? All righty. I think we'll end it there. Yeah, Bruno, give it a go, man. Can't go wrong, really. Cheers, everyone. I will see you later. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I forgot to mention that uh, Mr. AI himself was on that call, Jamie Woods, who's doing all of our builds for database reactivation. And as mentioned in the webinar, there's a link that we'll put in the description box, which has got all of the prompts and hand raiser SMSs and everything you need to get going quickly, all right? You can literally follow what we did in the call just then and implement, if you're an implementer, get it done and have everything ready to go in, a, in only a few days. I'm ex super excited for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment below if you've got any questions, we'll try our best to help you out. And lastly, subscribe to our channel so you'll be the first to know when any new video like this comes out. I'll speak to you soon.